to those who have sin in the ground. If you don't have sin in the ground, rain is a nuisance. But if you can put in some place, you can put in some place. Bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Try to adjust. Has some te technical difficulties with my streaming. It updated. So, but God bless each and every one. God bless each and every one. Just trying to adjust it. I keep disappearing. God bless you all. God bless you all. Trying to make it to where I don't disappear. So I got to put my hair in front. But God bless. God bless. God bless. Come on in. God bless. Come on in and welcome. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Lord God, thank you so very much, Almighty God, for another day, another opportunity, Lord God to stand before you, to come before you, almighty God. Father God, we know that the only way we can do that is through the accessible name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, it's in your righteous and mar marvelous name, oh God, that we come before your Lord. And Lord God, we need your greater. We need you right now, almighty God. I need you, Father God, to begin to clear my mind, clear the atmosphere, oh God, remove every weight, every form of distraction, almighty God, that would try to impede or stop, oh God, your very flow, almighty God. You know, Holy Spirit, oh God, I express greatly, oh God, my need and my dependency upon you, oh Lord, on tonight for you to speak by way of your Holy Spirit. And Lord God, as we approach you, oh God, we just tell you thank you because you're the marvelous and magnanimous God. You're the God, oh, oh Lord, that supplies everything, oh God. And Lord God, I thank you so very much, oh Lord. And Lord God, I thank you for being in the midst. I need your help, almighty God, right now. And I need your God because I need the heavens to open up and I need your rain, oh God, to pour out, oh God, upon this service, upon your people. Send your rain now, oh God. Most importantly, oh God, we need your glory and your presence, oh God, to be made known. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, without you, we wouldn't have our very moving and being. And most importantly, we wouldn't be able to come before you, Heavenly Father, if it was not for Jesus. Lord Jesus, we acknowledge you. Because you are truly our King, our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer. You made it possible. You are the great access, the only access, the, the accessible name, the accessible door, the only door that leads us and grant us the audience with the Father. And we thank you for that so greatly, Almighty God. Now, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray right now for your blood covering, oh God. I, Lord God, casting down the imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against your knowledge and, and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bring every thought. Wash our minds. Wash my mind. Purge and purify our thoughts, our motives, and our intentions, oh God. For we are naked before you, oh God. I cry out for my belly, oh God. I cry out because I need you, oh God. Lord Jesus Christ, I need you. Holy Spirit, you know all the activities, oh God, of which we have participating in throughout the day, even the activities that's going on in our mind, oh God. Lord God, arrest every thought, oh God, that will be a hindrance and a distraction, oh God, a bombardment or an oppression to us, oh God. And we ask, oh God, for clearance way. I need your Holy Spirit. I need your glory, oh God, to begin to manifest in every place of where we're gathered together. Now, Lord God, take us into this service, almighty God. Cover us under the blood. Lord Jesus Christ, I thank you, oh God, for, for clarity, for understanding, oh God. Enlighten our eyes. So, God, 
of understanding, oh God. I pray against every form of misunderstanding, miscommunication, every spirit of perversion that will try to distort or cause erroneous translation, almighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, make us sensitive to your very moving your presence, oh God. I thank you that your eyes already see. I know all things, oh God. I thank you that no weapon form is going to prosper. And every tongue that rise up in judgment is condemned. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I'm trying to adjust this and there's a lot going on. I might counsel. I might counsel. <laughs> I might counsel. I might counsel. Glory to God. I might counsel. I might counsel. Glory to God. Let me turn this down. I said that there's no sense, not every, not every time. Glory to God. I'm going to start thinking maybe it's, not, it's, it's God that's is saying something. Glory to God. I could push past anything. God knows I can push past anything, but sometimes I don't feel like pushing past. Sometimes I don't feel like pushing past. And I believe this is one of them times I do not feel like pushing past. And I'm just being honest. It just don't take, it's just not necessary. And I know sometimes, and, and, and maybe everyone may not agree with the way I articulate or the way that I just openly be transparent, but I was I was sharing with Prophet Karnisha earlier today. I can't hide, and many people who know me, I cannot hide what is apparent on my face or in my spirit. And my husband, that's one of the things he knew about me. And he used to say, you know, I, I, I will, I will express it. There's a lot of things in this and, and God has been so great. God has been so great. I had so much, uh, really, I was already ready. I had technical difficulty and now this, the, the zoom upgraded and it wasn't allowing me in. And I've been, I was working on it for over like 10 minutes and would have been on time. And so between that and always the interruption right before I get ready to come on, it's always, a dis disruption or something. And so uh, I told the Lord, it shouldn't be like that. I'm like, God, I, I'm excited for the word, but yet and still, I need my spirit right so I can deliver the word. I don't need my spirit heavy or sad. And sometimes, you know, it's not just sometimes, and oftentimes, uh, I think because of the things that he reveals to me and the motives behind a lot of things before approaching prophetic flow of revelation, the enemy, of course, I know the enemy don't want a lot of things being spoken or or revealed. Um, and nevertheless, God is God and he will always be God with or without us. And, and so um, I give him all the glory and the honor. I really do feel like just saying, forget it and counseling it. Um, um, the, the, the Jesus is real. Um You know, sometimes, oh, not some, um, Holy Spirit, give me the right. You know, anytime I struggle to say something, it's because I'm so busy trying to watch uh, what I'm saying, of who it is I'm saying it to, because all the time, most sometimes everyone cannot receive how you say things. And so sometimes it can put a muzzle. It almost muzzles you from saying something because when you approach someone, it's always a, a guard to go up. People's body is body motions and facial expressions. In person is different. In the spirit, when I don't see no one's face, but I see the spirit, that too is no different than if I'm physically in front of somebody and he still allowed me to pick up. Now I don't know which way he's going. However, however he want to go, because if he's trying to get me ready to not go off, because I would just say, forget it. I told you all, if he don't speak, I don't speak. 
there is a word. However, if I'm not released and, and things come on, I am so concerned about how I'm presenting something, how my spirit is. And then at the same time, if I'm picking up something in the spirit, that too will play a role in, you know, we'll just forget it. And sometimes people want you to say, forget it. You know, it is, it's like when we do this, I don't think people really understand the, the importance or the severity of when leaders, I don't want to use the word hate. It's just, it, I just truly dislike the fact that people think it's an easy job or they think it make it look easy or, and, or the fact that when you're trying to do something, you got more people working against you than working for you. Now, regardless, people will say, well, don't pay no attention or you shouldn't even look at that. Well, be in this these shoes because there are some times where you can't help but to see what is being thrown at you. So I'll tell people, then you eat it. You come stand right here because whether you believe it or not, in the beginning, before you was born, you were signed up for something before you decided willingly or unwillingly you were going to be drafted anyway. And so with some of us, we, we didn't ask to be in certain places or to be whether you didn't want to be a parent right now. It happened. Whether you don't want to be a pastor right now. It happens. Whether you don't want to be a leader right now. It happens. Whether you don't want to be without this. It happens. Whether you whatever it happens, whatever happens in our life, it happens sometimes without our control. It just happens. And in this place right here, you get more coming against you than you do supporting you. And I'm just getting this out to, because it's not just that. I deal with a whole lot of things on myself that I got to make sure that God knows that I don't want to present anything raggedy. It hurts my heart and my spirit because you have one good day and one, you know, one day you're flowing good. And then next minute you got all these different, like I said, different, different spirits and personalities of spirits and people that are being projected. And people don't know that it does have an effect and something that people do is stings. And then you got to get past that sting. It's just not right all the time. Then you got to get past your own self because yourself got to die. I told you, this is the place. I'm not no different. I, this is the platform. This is the altar of where we die. And when I stand here, I'm dying before people. I'm not pretentious or, or fake. Like I said before, many times, the only thing fake on me is this hair, these eyelashes and whatnot. And, and that's a lot, that's a makeup, but that's just cosmetics. But what's inside of me, that's real. I don't, I don't care if I take off this hair, we all be at the altar probably. I, I mean, what? It's, hello, huh? I might just go wrong. But what's inside of me is real. People can laugh and say whatever, or whatever they don't like what's coming out, and, you know, and people just it's just people are people and we in the body of Christ I guess I'm just backed up a lot of things and I think my heart hurt when I see every time I get ready to come on Mondays sometimes it's such a battle and I'm thinking well leave the Lord I don't either if it happens again I'm not I'm just gonna counsel or if I feel if it's a struggle I'm a counsel in the midst whether you know anyone understands that or not seek the Lord because we don't know uh Jesus is real, but God is good. I give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. I thank God for Jesus and thank God for the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, if he don't speak, I don't speak. And I thank God for my beautiful husband who is resting his sleep still in Christ Jesus, none other than the astronomical eagle-eyed prophet, Apostle Andrew McGee Jr. To each and every one of you and your prospective places, respective places, and to the Divine Purpose Ministry family, beautiful Divine Purpose Ministry family, God bless you. And each and every one who is fellowshipping. I ask each time for each person to share, to share, to share, or to tag someone. We get some who share, some who don't. Uh, glory to God. I just ask that you share. Um, I don't press seed and I believe in the power of sowing seed. Many people get blessed. And when it comes to myself, it'd be, I get conservative answers of why people can't sow or why they do so. And, and so I'm not one of those, uh, you, you pay for a prophecy because many of you have sown seed in prophecy and haven't seen nothing yet, but yet God will lead you here and you get a word and God bless you. And not even so much as $2 or I'll give it back because it's just what it is. Y'all It is what it is. I know the word of what the word of God say, um, about it. And so it's not because I'm against it, because I believe rain cannot hit a dry ground and there's no seed in it. And yet we expect something to grow from from nothing that we have not planted in into. And so once I, I, I give my 
whole self. I'm a seed now. I'm dying before the people of God. And so I thank God that he allows me opportunity to express just like Paul. But the Bible begins to say, Paul said, I would that no one would be married. God didn't say it. God allowed Paul to say it. Some things God allowed his messengers to say that God yet still endorses. And we keep it within the realm of God's permission and authority to speak. And so with that being said, uh, what, there's things that he's allowed me to say that still that he backs according to his word. But he said, I say, not he say. And so I, I'm just saying uh, that that this is sometimes often a problem that, you know, these big prophets and these big ministries and people so into that, and yet you don't have a personal relationship. And I get a lot of personal uh, people reaching out and yet and still I'm not valuable enough or significant enough for you to so see to a soil that you get the production of something that God gives you and he gives you an answer and yet and still got to go forth and this is what leaders like myself who have been put in a position still got to do regardless people like you don't like you and you say something that is according to the word then we try to justify it we try to reason it it's just a whole lot of it, I'm telling you it's a lot of bureaucracy to me <laughs> in the body of Christ but Jesus is real and nevertheless I love God I love his word I can't do nothing without him and so I guess that's why I, I, my heart goes out and Sometimes it weeps and sometimes it cries because if it don't go the way that I know that God deserves it, he deserved the best. He deserve excellent. And I don't want to stand before him or his people and not present and just present anything. Some people don't care what what attitude or, or what spirit they in. I do. It's just like when you cook it. I was always taught, be careful what spirit you or you're in when you're cooking, because if you're cooking angry, guess what? That spirit goes out over that food. People eat your food and then they, and then what? They walk away wonder why they mad and they angry because the person who was cooking was mad and they was angry. So be it. If you're joyful and you're excited, your spirit's right. It's the same thing of delivering the word of God is food is being fed to his people. And I don't want, I don't like all a lot of stuff in my spirit because it blocks and I need the Holy ghost to flow freely. Um, glory to God. I need the Holy spirit to, uh, flow freely. God bless you. My beautiful, uh, prophetess Chrissy. God bless you. Elder Williams. God bless you. Uh, evangelist Tina. God bless you. Sister Jane. God bless you. I don't know who else have come on. Uh, but God bless you. So let me see which way, if the Holy Spirit allowed me to proceed. There is a word. It was already prepared. And this is going to be part two, especially from yesterday. But in my belly, it hurts. I don't know why. It's just all of a sudden, a lot of things just came, you know, if you just allow me just to get this, get this out, get this out as he's allowed me to talk, just share some things, just share some things real quick. And we're going to get into this. And if there be a part two, then there'd be a part two. If it be a part two, or if it be any, I mean, a part three or whatnot, but you know, something has been bothering my spirit and I have expressed this to certain ones. And I'm just going to share with you all openly because sometimes people may be watching it and the, and the ones that I dreamed about, sometimes they watch off the timeline, but if they will just contact and make contact, God can release what it is. But sometimes people don't want to want people to know they're associated with your timeline. And so sometimes Time, that might be what your the answer that God has put in the very one you don't want to hear it from. I don't, you know, Jesus is real. Uh, Jesus is real. He God worked like that. You don't ask to see some things that you see, but he chose to show you the things that he show you. And then sometimes the answer have to come through you and people don't want to come to you because of either they have some kind of feeling about, well, why I got to be you? Well, why not? God chose you. <laughs> You can't help what you see, people of God. You can't help that you're the one that he 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 put that in. It's the reason why. And so I, I had these few dreams about some people that I, I know. They're not in this ministry, about some people I know. And it disturbed me because God gave me the interpretation of what it was he was revealing to me. Even early this morning, he showed me this man of God and he showed me something concerning uh concerning death and i and i, I didn't get the interpretation until i was talking to prophet quanisha and i had told her i had shared this dream with one of with one of my daughters already and, and, and so i just the holy spirit just allowed me to share with her then she could ask her i don't ever share dreams with her this is probably one of the first time i've ever opened up and shared dreams uh or a, a dream with her and so in this particular part this man of god just appeared he wasn't part of my dream he just appeared at the end as i was waking up from the dream dream. And I was wondering why he was dressed in this black tuxedo, like a black suit. And he had this white, uh, white shirt, uh, a man's shirt underneath, but he had a white bow tie. And it wasn't until I told her that part that she repeated back white bow tie. And as soon as she said that, the Holy Spirit told me as about to be, he, God was preparing him to, for the death of his mother. And so 
when I shared that, so I got it. She began to share. She said, oh, wow, Proverbs, when you said about the bow tie, the Lord had brought to me about a carnation, a white carnation referring to a mother. So it's afterwards. So I understood that, however, but because of how people sometimes treat you, it, 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 it don't, the Holy Spirit can't release you sometimes to go to a person if they don't receive you. And then I had another dream about um, two other people and, and another man of God and a woman of God. And, and, and God showed me a decline in this person's health and, and I couldn't reach out. And, and the reason why it's not because I couldn't reach out is because sometimes if people put up this block or project and they reject you or they put their mouth on you, then, then God don't press or release you. And then people end up getting mad. Well, why didn't you say something? You can't get mad if you if a person don't receive you and God don't release you. You can't get mad at the person that God refrained from revealing it. Yeah, it, ma it makes it hard because me, God knows I wanted to share. I'd be excited about sharing. And sometimes he just won't allow me to share some revelations or some some dreams or interpretation or something he's speaking because because of the backbite or because of the, the backbite of it. Or, you know, Jesus is real. God is good. God is good. Or because a person don't understand it, then they minimize it or water it down because they don't have that revelation insight. And because they can't understand, then it's got to be not God. No, you, you can't let no. No, some things you share, some people cannot understand. And so sometimes it makes you not want to share because they'll make you feel crazy or they'll water down or dumb down the very thing that God is revealing just because they can't see it or they can't understand it. Y'all, we can't do that. And it's only the people in the body of Christ that seems to do this. Jesus is real. We got to, we got to do better. I just, just had to get that out. And so these, some of these things are backed up and I'm like, God, I want to say, but I can't, how can I say, I want to call, but I'm like, Lord, Jesus is real. He ain't pressed one way or the other. I just, all I do is just pray. That's all I do is pray. And then he started revealing to me alligators again. I say, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here go some alligators again. Dream about tractors on fire, trying to save somebody, and then you jump in water. Here come alligators after you, because you trying to save somebody else. Y'all, Jesus is real. Yeah. But God is good. So let's see if we can see what we can, what the Holy Ghost have to say about this. Let's see what the Holy Spirit have to say about this. Uh, here the Holy Spirit have to say about this. God is good. So, you know, what? I want to express something about dreams and we're going to go into this and see what the Holy Spirit has to say. Well, I thank God for Jesus and I thank God for each and every one of you for allowing me to be me. I pray that no one's ashamed of me. If you are, I just pray that you just kindly dismiss yourself and, and it's okay. If we don't, everybody don't like everybody. And so, you know, nevertheless, maybe somebody will catch the bait. Thank you all for those who are shared and tag someone in. Um, if they don't know me, I pray that people get to know me and you by the spirit. Um, glory to God. So with this part two, we've been talking about the prophetic revelation of rain. And I see the time, so I won't hold you guys long and be it so I'll pick it up if God allows me at another time or whatnot. This is the prophetic flow of revelations. And so God bless each and every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. I salute you and I greet you. And so dreams, I just want to go over the, the meaning of dreams because dreams is going to play a very intricate or important role in the birthing of a seed. Uh, um, what's the name of this again? The birthing, birthing seed that identifies a need. And so birthing seed that identifies a need. And so I want to go, I'm going to speak about dreams, but let me share something that the Holy Spirit uh, began to speak to me, and I shared it on this flyer, or audible flyer, when I began to express what it is about rain. And, and so at 929, which was uh, last night, I think, did I get the date right? Yeah. Last night at 929, I began to hear and see the Holy Spirit uh, as he began to take me into a deeper study and understanding of what exists mean and 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 rain, I begin to write this. This is what off of the study of exist. Now exist in Hebrew is called Hayah. And many of you may have heard or remember the teachings of prophetic revelations that begin to uh, expound upon the word exist, which means to be, which is Hayah. And so he began to have me write that which exists behaves according to the nature of why it was created. Everything that exists it behaves according to the nature. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He's speaking already. 
without notes. So in Romans, in, in, in the book of Romans, let me go there since he's taking me there. Let me show you this. So let's go to the book of Romans. Uh, let's go to the book of Romans. I believe it's in chapter one. I believe this is in chapter one. And this is where the perversion, the distortment has come in at from the end of Satan or why he always tries to he always tries to get the seed. He always wants to try to contaminate the seed, which is the process, which is the process of which something's being conceived. And that's why the Bible, thank you, Holy Ghost, the Bible begins to say that we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. The enemy wants to affect what is being conceived. And so with that, when, when he had me write about that every, everything which exists uh, behaves according to the nature of which or why it was created. See, God created and God's nature is pure. It's not, it's not perverted, but the enemy through sin comes in and tries to cause perversion, which a lot of people say, well, God made me like this. Nah, nope. Because the nature of God is not perversion, but uh, the nature of what God created something should behave according to the nature of why God created it. But right here in Romans, we see that some kind of way uh, the, the, the seed got perverted because he says right here um, in verse, if you go down to 24, let's, let's look at 24. It says, wherefore, Romans 1, 24, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the, through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And it says, who changed the truth? of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who blessed them forever. And so let me read this in two other versions. Let me read this in the Amplified. It says, therefore, God gave them over to gave them over in their lust of their own hearts to sexual impurity. Sexual impurity comes from perversion. Perversion is anything that, dis that distorts the truth of God's nature. That's what perversion is. Perversion is just not the sexual sins that do, that burst out whether homosexuality or burst out of uh, fetishes and burst out every kind of lasciviousness and fornication or it, it, it bursts out wickedness it bursts out stealings and murders and and witchcraft. Uh, uh, perversion distorts anything that is God's truth. It distorts the truth of it. That's what perversion is. And it causes impurities. And so we see right here, it says so that their bodies would be dishonored among abandoning them to degrading power of sin. So they went against the nature of why God created male and female. And it's acting contrary to the nature. That's not what God created in the nature. Okay. It says because by choice, not because of God's will, but because of man's choice and free will, they exchange the true nature, the truth of God, which is his true nature, for a lie and worship and serve the creature after, I mean, serve the creature rather than the creator who blessed them forever. Amen. And so he had me read this and go this route. Um, let me put this up. He had me go this route. Glory to God. He had me go this route because last night when he began to take me into this, now just follow with me. Just if you follow with me, I'll try to do my best. And you guys, uh, evangelists over here, you guys can say, slow down. Uh, can you repeat that? Please talk to me, communicate with me. If I'm going too fast, can you repeat that? I'll try to look at it. And if Evangela catches, she'll, she'll messenger me and, and say, you know, can you repeat that? Can you slow down? I, I would love some engagement. And, and I will pull on the, the anointing, the spirit and the gifting of God so he can flow and speak. Whatever it is you have in your spirit, communicate. Don't be afraid or uh, with. don't be withdrawn ask questions, engage in it. You never know what it might bring out, what revelation that God may reveal. And so moving forward. So when he had me write that, which exists behaves according to the nature of, of why it was created. So this goes back to Genesis. I'm going to put, I'm going to pick up from yesterday, but this goes back to Genesis. And as, and as he's recalling even right now, that everything that God made had a seed in it. And everything God made in itself have a seed to produce seed. 
just like plants yielding seed within itself, it also has the seed. And so even with man, man had a seed, which was woman. Woman inside the woman had a seed to birth out the seed that man planted in her, but God created both male and female, created he them. And so when he created him them, he created them us. And within them had the power of seed to produce seed. But yet everything needs something to water it or to fertilize it to, in order for it to bring forth what it has been, uh, what the seed has been planted in it to do. And so a seed can be planted, but if it don't come and be watered, it cannot come forth. And so there are there, the nature of what God created each thing to do knows how to behave according to the nature of why it exists and why it was created. So that means everything that exists knows what it's supposed to do. Except man. <laughs> We the only one that don't act according to the nature. Our nature, we have decided to change the nature and act, behave certain ways. And I thank you, Holy Ghost. And so even with that, when things begin to act out, you know the nature of it. And so look at the nature of how it's behaving will let you know what seed, if it's a divine seed or if it's a demonic seed. I don't want to keep going there. So so with that, even in Hebrew, the word exist is a Hebrew, is Hebrew for haya. But the Hebrew language does not use the verb to be as English does. So the word exist in, in Hebrew language is haya, which means to be. However, when you begin to define it in English transliteration, it don't use that word. And so, in fact, if the verb haya, meaning to be, is used, it indicates defining behavior. When someone is a carpenter, this is the example of the Hebrew study of my, of my study and it came about. So, for instance, when someone is a carpenter or someone's a painter or someone's a cook, he is busy being a carpenter, a cook a realtor, a bookkeeper, an accountant, whatever he is, a pastor, whatever he is, right? So that he is not simply there, but he is acting out the behavior that makes him that carpenter, that cook. If I am a cook, a baker, I'm not going to act like I, I am a fireman. The nature of a carpenter should come out in the action of my behavior, so everything that exists to be is what God has made you to be. It should start showing and acting out the nature of what it's supposed to be or why it exists. So that means it goes back to the existence of the seed has a purpose in it. And so this is why we must, that's why the seed got to identify the need and the need must identify the purpose that was in the seed. Okay. I, I, are you guys with me? God bless you, my beautiful prophet, Justin. God bless you. God bless you, man of God. God bless you. I see you on here. God bless you. Uh, thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the hearts. So that means you understand. At least I know some people. Uh, now, if I didn't see your heart and you did put it up, thank you for your hearts too, because I can only see a few at a time. So, let, so let's go forward with this. And so you act out of the nature which you was created or purpose to do. We are supposed to act out the nature of why we was created. Remember, exist means, a purpose means you exist with a purpose. And so if uh, a purpose means it's something that exists for a reason, you exist for a reason. Now, I want to go to a particular scripture, going to see which way he's going to take this and go into this rain. And remember I said on yesterday that this has something to do with Lot and Abraham. It goes all the way back to the book of Genesis, um, it goes all the way back to the book of Genesis when it begins to describe how rain and man became important tools for God in, in instrumental work and the handiwork of God. Rain and man are God instrumental tools that he is that is essential in the birthing process. 
And so remember the question that the Holy Spirit had me ask, that how can you imagine something that don't exist if it doesn't exist? Well, on yesterday, he began to open up the revelation and the answer. He allowed me to reveal the answer or how he showed. And, and we'll try to go back into that because he began to now allow me to demonstrate the calculation of light and, and light years and how it travels and, and how things enter into the earth realm and how we are on really delayed time when we're operating the chronos, things have already happened. It's just now reaching us at a certain time, just like a certain star that we begin to see shine has already shown or shine over 4.2 years prior before reaching the earth. And so things that happens in the spirit has already happened. We're just waiting on the manifestation of what already happened. So things that we say that don't exist have already existed. Why? Because everything that was created was created in who? Jesus Christ. Let's go to a first scripture. Let me let me go here first since this is the way he taken. And if I'm coming strong, it's the reason why I'm coming strong right now. It's the reason um, why I'm coming strong right now. So let me go to to what's this scripture right here? John. Let's go to John 1. First scripture, John 1. John 1. So, okay, so I saw the nature of individual inventors that created the need for light, electricity, cars, airplanes, and many other things that were invented to fulfill a need. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's good, evangel uh, uh, elder. Not created, but the need of those things were because of the need that God had birthed in the nature of the individual. Yes. And the nature of it was placed in the seed, which was already written in the firmament. So, oh, this is real good. So before I go to your Bibles in John 1 and keep it there, and I'm going to respond to Elder Williams. Very, oh, I love that. Thank you, Elder. Yes. And so when a need has been identified, God, oh, thank you, Elder. I can't even get this out. She made me excited, y'all. Oh, boy, I think she just revved up my engine with this question because it's going along with what well, I'm going to start off with dreams and, and, and visions. Oh, thank you, Elder. Glory to God. And so, yes, 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 yes. And so the seed got to identify a need. And so until man can come into the, the awareness of what God has already placed, see electricity had already been invented when, when in God, let me go here first. I got to go here first to support what it is the elder just put. So right here in, in John, if you go to ch John chapter one and you go down to verse three, let me read this. Well, she got me excited. So let me calm down. Cause y'all know if I get excited, I talk too fast. So Jesus is real. And so it says right here in John 1 and 3, all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And so uh, the Amplified says all things were made and came into existence through him, which is Jesus. And without him, Jesus, not even one thing was made that has come into being. Into being is Haya. Let there be. Remember on yesterday when he said, let there be, we, we began to realize that God was speaking seed. And in, in chapter two of Genesis, it was it was when the word what was speaking into the light years and the light years had to come into existence into the Gregorian calendar year. Remember, oh yes, I'll go back because the calendar year is 8,766 hours. Now you multiply that times the amount of light years we had got 9.5 trillion miles kilometers and so that's how long one light year it takes to reach the earth and so if it took that in one year oh, i hear you holy ghost and remember one day is as what a thousand years and so can you imagine that seven thousand years times eight thousand seven hundred sixty six thousand hours times the amount of light years you get well over 9.5 times seven which is around about roughly about 66.5 trillion if not more Oh, Euler's, which is E equals MC to the 16th power. Now you see how long it takes that on with each day he created, he did it in Genesis 1, but it came into being in Genesis 2, which was the manifestation, right? And so everything he spoke, I'm getting to you, Elder, I'm getting to you what you have posted. Everything that was existed 
was written in the firmament, which is the Rakia in Hebrew. And we know that the firmament, which is that was called the heaven, was different than the heavens that he created. Because in the firmament was written the whole drama of everything, the prophecies, the, the harbingers, everything that's come to pass, everything that should exist. Now remember the earth, it begins to say in Genesis, let me read this first because I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Let me let me read these scriptures. I'm gonna go back to it. Uh, let's go to Colossians real quick. Let's go to Colossians one. Let me let me finish supporting this. So we go back. We're gonna go to the nature. Thank you, Elder. I, I and I thank each and every one of you. If I haven't seen your response yet, I'm just saying that really rev my my engine, my Ford engine. I felt like the Flintstones, like I needed some cranking up. Um, and she's evolving me. That's that 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 question or that statement is evolving me now. Until now, we don't have to crank up and use our feet to now run engines and, and, and cars. We don't need horses and carriages. Now we can just push start a car and it come home. Glory to God, to the Lord, thank you. So Colossians real quick, Colossians real quick. Jesus is real. Colossians 1, 16. Colossians 1, 16. So we see that everything that exists cannot come into existence without Jesus. Um, and so right here it says, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible, non-existent and invisible. I mean, visible, the things that we see and invisible, the things that we do not see that we say does not exist. So how can something, how can we imagine something that doesn't exist if it never existed? That was the question the Holy Spirit had me pose. And we, he gave the answer yesterday, but let's expound further upon it. And the scripture right here is helping us to come into deeper revelation of answering that question because it's possible to imagine something that never existed uh, in the earth realm, but it existed in another eon, another time zone, another, it existed already because of Jesus. And so, and it existed with the purpose of the nature of which, what it was to behave. And that seed is going to identify the need that God placed within an individual that he plant the seed in order for them to bring about the fulfillment of the purpose of the seed of why he created it to exist. Oh, that was a mouthful, but I, I know you got that. I know you called that. And so it says right here in Colossians 1 16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and, in the, and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him, all things consist and he is the head of the body of the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. It says, for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell and having made peace through the blood of his cross and by the and by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him. I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, I'm going to stop right there. Now I'm going to go back up because I want to read it and um the amplified and the young literal translation, because that's that's like the Hebrew uh, context. And so it says, because in him were all things created, those in the heavens and those upon the earth, things visible, invisible, whether thrones, whether lordship, whether principalities, whether authorities. Um, it says right here, all things were created and exist through him, that is by his activities and for him. And he himself existed and is before all things. He ex existed and is before all things. And in him, all things hold together. He is the controlling, cohesive force of the universe. So why people worship the universe instead of worship the creator of the universe because our creator is the cohesive glue that's holding the whole universe together. In our galaxy, there's trillions and billions of stars and within just our galaxy of the Earth's solar system. That's not to compare to all the other galaxies and, and all the other planets that have their own solar system and galaxies and trillions and billions of stars and different moons associated with them. And God himself is the cohesive part that's holding it all together. Because why? He's a God that does not be, that is not confound with time. And he has to exist outside of something that exists within in time. And so anything that exists 
has a time on it. And so you got to have something that don't have an expiration date in order to create it and call it time. And so this is where we get the eternal, invisible, immortal God, the God that sits outside eternity. He is eternal. He's beginning, he's the end. He's always was and always is and, and will always be. He has no, there's no tracing to his beginning and no tracing to his ending. He is the one that sits outside of what controls the time inside of it. Oh, come on, somebody. And so when people say, how can you imagine something that don't exist because it only identifies when the need comes about and now it pulls on what the one who created the things before it existed and so he allows human mind that's operating a portion of the mind of the brain that god gave it because in the original beginning man before he fell was operating directly from the mind of god and so everything that God had created, this is why the thing, let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Watch it. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis right here. Let's go to Genesis. Let's go to Genesis. Look at this. I read this on yesterday. Let's go to Genesis. And I'm going to read this again. I'm going to read it in Genesis. Uh, let's go up. Uh, here we go. Um, after his kind, Genesis 1, and I want to go to, I read the whole thing, but I don't want to read the whole thing. Uh, let me start at 17, Genesis 1, 17. I'm going to read 17 on a drop down. So it says, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven and give light upon the earth. And so let me drop down. In verse 20, it says, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature and have life and fowl uh, may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven and the open firmament. Now drop down. It begins to say how God created great whales and, and living creatures that move and the waters brought forth abundantly. The waters brought forth. Now he's creating and it says, and God blessed them saying, God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters. God is speaking. He's speaking seed. He's speaking seed. The word is the seed. The word is the seed. He's speaking seed. And so when we go all the way down in 24, it says, God said, let the earth bring forth. He is impregnated. God is making the earth pregnant. This is what we see in taking place in Genesis. He is impregnating everything that was spoken in the firmament, in the conception of his thought. He is now, he's implanting it. It's like a man getting a woman pregnant. God is getting the earth pregnant with what he already, what? What was already existing or pre-existing within him. And so we see right here, God is saying, let there be, let there be. That means haya. Coming to existence, coming to existence, coming to existence. And so we see, we drop on down. We see in verse 25, he said, God made the beast of the earth at his kind. Everything that exists, exists and behaves according to the nature of why God created it. Oh, you see this? Now look at 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, and the image of the nature of God have a, has a Why? Because remember, it's a type of shadow of Jesus already. What? Jesus was already in the beginning. When it says, in the beginning, in Hebrew, that's better sheet. Better sheet, when you begin to break down every Hebrew alphabet, he had me teach on this before, it meant that Christ knew that he would be destroyed upon the tree, the cross, by his own hand. It was already written prior, which we know that before the foundations of the world, that the Lamb of God was slain. And so everything was existed. Everything had already happened. Remember light years of when God speaks a word. Remember, light years is created by the word of God. So the word of God is even quicker, faster than the speed of light. Light travels in light years according to the distance of each planet. And this planet has 8,000 766 hours in a 365 day 
calendar Gregorian calendar year. That's not considered the prophetic calendar year, which is 360, by which God operates at certain times in the Bible. That means something speed up according to God's prophetic calendar year. So that means when God speak a word, Light got to obey, but when he wants something to happen now, he steps outside of Chronos time. The only reason why light years is incorporated, is I'm hearing him now, light years, why when it travels so fast, it now slows up time as you exit out of the atmosphere of Earth. And so when you exit out, time going so fast, it slows up the death process. And what I mean by the death process, meaning your age starts slowing up. You don't age as fast, but yet you catch up to the original word that was spoken in light years, but by the word of God. So that means when God wants something to happen, he speaks a word. That means light year got to obey the word when God said now. That means it manifests now. It don't take light years for it to eight minutes before it enters the earth and we wait on the manifestation. No, because now God superimposed and defied the laws of nature. Glory to God. Okay, so we see right here. And so God said, look at 29. And it says, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree. And the which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed to you, it shall be for me. So we see right here that in the beginning, now I'm going to go to verse one and I'm going to go to chapter two. Go back up to verse one, Genesis one and one. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. I'm going to read it to us in the Amplified, and then I'm going to read it to us in the YLT translation. Amplified says, in the beginning, God, Elohim, created by forming from nothing the heavens and the earth. So nothing is void. Nothing is void. But in order to imagine something that didn't exist, something had to have existed before. In order for it to be imagined in human's mind. Let me prove it. So here's what it says in the young literal translation. In the beginning of God's preparing the heaven and the earth, it says the earth had existed waste and void and darkness is on the face of the deep and the spirit of God fluttering over the face of the water. So the face of the water, you see water is needed, but something already had existed in order for it to be a void, this is where we get the fall where, where Satan was cast out of heaven. And when he was cast out, this void was created. Theories and scientists want to call it the gap theory. No, between Genesis 1 and 2, there was something there, but something caused a, a chaos. And so this is where now God is preparing. He's speaking into existence. Now impregnation comes and is filling a void. Purpose is now being birthed for. Now look at Genesis 2. Look at Genesis 2 and 4. Look at Genesis 2 and 4. And we're going to prove this right here. Genesis 2 and 4. And we're going to move on. We're going to move forward with the rest. It says right here. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth. When they, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth. And every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Now, let me read this for us in the Amplified and then in the Young Literal Translation. It says, this is the history of the origin of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that is days of creation that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. No shrub or plant of the field was yet in the earth. I thought we just read in Genesis one that he was creating it. It should have been, it appeared like it was already in the earth. What is going on? Let's read. It says, um, what had not yet sprouted for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth. And there was no man to cultivate the ground. Young literal translation says, these are the births of the heavens. That's plural. That means it's more than one heaven. Plurals. These are the births, plural, of heavens, plural, and of the earth, singular. Earth, 
singular, heavens, plural. And it says, in their being prepared, in the day of Jehovah God's making earth and heavens, and no shrub of the field is yet in the earth, and no herb of the field yet sprouted, for Jehovah God had not rained upon the earth. And man, and a man, it says, and a man, there was not to serve the ground. That means the purpose of which God created and those things in chapter one and why they exist had to meet something that had purpose in it to help birth it out. Rain is the water that is always needed upon a seed. But for a seed to come forth, it has to have a meet purpose. Man's need for the seed is identifying the purpose of why it both exists. You follow me? And so with that, with that, this is where the Holy Spirit, right here, let me go to it. This is where he began to have me define, define the word need. I'm going to go back. I'm going to answer what Elder has said about the electricity and the man. I ain't forgot about it because it, it ties in with what he's revealing. And so, and so rain is always the vehicle and the transportation, why? Rain is behaving exactly how God had created the nature of it to behave. Rain knows in its behavior when, where, and how to come. It knows because God has already spoken to rain the nature of why it exists and how it should behave. And at the time, just like during Noah's time, the rain knew how to behave. There are certain types of rain that God begins to release because the word rain in Hebrew means matar. But we're going to see the whole definitive meaning and the revelation that's attached and points us to Jesus and why everything in him had to come forth, had to behave according to why, how it was created. And so rain at certain times didn't rain every types of rain. There's some shower rain rains, there's some flood rains, there's some acid rain, there's some sulfur rain, there's some glass rain, there's some there's some diamond rains. Oh yeah, there's different types of rain, former, latter rain. And so rain is the vehicle or the transportation that communicates what? It communicates to the seed. And in the seed has the purpose, but the seed got to identify the need. And the need is something that is essential uh, or important. So let me read the definition of need. Need by definition means require something because it is essential or very important. Need communicates the very expressive necessity and need for the seed because in the seed carries the purpose of which needs need. Okay. And so need identifies purpose of why one exists. And at 12.44 p.m. on yesterday afternoon, it, the Holy Spirit, I began to hear and see him right. And, I, and he had me say this earlier. If you have no need of God, there is no reason of your purpose by which God has created something that your purpose is to or will fulfill. So if there's no need, and this is going to all go back to the need of rain, because rain is what God used as his communication to communicate to a people of his, a children of his, the necessity of them needing him and not other gods. And there's a reason why God said on the seventh day, why to rest, not so much for the act activities of which it is really taught or how it's taught. When you go into the Hebrew study, God rested. When he said for man to rest, he didn't want man to depend on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday gods, that Saturday, all those gods, mythological gods that was related to the constellation that the enemy began to come in and pervert. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Sunday are not the original Hebrew words of the days of the week. Those are Greek gods. Thursday, Wednesday, these are Greek ones. And so those Greek gods that the enemy set up that people begin to rely on, especially in Egypt, which got the children of Israel in trouble for worshiping different gods because some gods like Zeus and the, and, and the Baal gods said they the ownership over all the water and they controlled the rain. And so God said, no, let you cease from your activity because on the seventh day, you're going to the need to depend on the one who provides the heavy rainfall and not just the water that they begin to what? Use what 
with their feet. Remember on yesterday, we want to revisit that. And so there's a reason for everything because the rain is the dependency of God's people upon God, this type of rain, okay? And so when he said if there's no need of God, there's no reason for your purpose. If we don't need God, the seed of what God has created will never be fruitful or manifest in our life because there's no need for it being shown. It has to identify. I, I pray you're following me. I pray you're following me. Anybody got a question? I'm trying to look. I'm trying to, I'm trying to look and see. I'm trying to look and see. Okay. If anybody have any questions, I'm trying to look and see. Invite someone, tag somebody in, share it, share it, share it, share it with somebody. And so with that, at 801 on January 20th, I begin to hear and see the Holy Ghost have me right. Until there is a need for something, it does not exist. Remember, everything invisible and visible existed in him, Jesus. And it already had been existed, but we didn't come into the knowledge of the need for it to exist in the natural realm until a need was presented. And when a need is presented, man now begins to pray for the revealing or the manifestation or the revelation of what the seed was spoken into creation and why it exists. And that existence has everything to do with our need, okay? And so it says, until there is a need for something, it does not exist. It is not until after there is a need, then man has a dream or vision of what seems to not have existed in their human knowledge. Now God begins to reveal his knowledge to man when they realize their knowledge, it, it, it confines them to the what is existing in the earth or what they can see. See, man's mind is like this. If I don't see it, I don't believe it. Man's mind is I got to see it before I believe it. And that's because of the confinement of the human knowledge, the human mind. But when we go into the knowledge of God, which is word of knowledge, God lets you know something that's not been known by human knowledge. And the wisdom of God lets you know what to do about what it is. He just let be made known to you by revelation of the Holy Spirit. And so with that, remember dreams. And now this goes on to how dreams play a role in the birthing and calling forth the rain, which God used instrumentally and the instrumental use of both is needed. And then we'll go to, we'll go to the history of the Bible of where it really originated from this rain and different type of rain. What time is it? I'm trying to hurry up since I got started. We've been an hour into it. So by dream, by, by definition, look at this, look at this. We're going to show, look at Genesis 41. Look, look at Genesis 41. Y'all familiar with this scripture? Genesis 41 has to do with a dream. This dream produced, this dream was from God. Now God is now giving a dream to a man, a, to Pharaoh, to now produce the need, which is going to what? Have been identified with God already have purpose in the sea, but he need man. So we're going to see two people being used, Joseph and Pharaoh. Look at this. It says right here in Genesis 41 and look at one. Um, it says, and it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed and behold, he stood by a river and behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat and, and um, fat fleshed and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored of the lean-fleshed kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke from the dream. Now it says, and he slept and dreamed a second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk. And we know that. And let me go all the way down. And it says, and, and, and it came to pass in verse eight, in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. 
The then spake the chief butler, here come purpose. A white God already what? Created Joseph. Joseph is now coming into why he is now needed. So you got two needs being met by God because the need that was in Joseph was not yet revealed into the word of God. I hear you, Holy Ghost, now. It says in Psalms 105, 19, and the, until the word of prophecy came to pass in Joseph's life, the word of God tried him. And so until the need of why God created and put the seed and the purpose in Joseph, he did not come into the revelation of it until what God had spoken in him was needed. And so when God needs something and the time for it is needed, it, God will begin to now what? Reveal it and call it forth. And so now the rain is now preparing itself. Why? Because now the rain is the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Now what? Being moved up on the sea, just like we saw in Genesis. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Just like we saw in Genesis when the word of God began to speak and it said, and the spirit of God began to move. So now the spirit of God is meeting with the word of God that's been planted in Joseph's life and also been planted in Pharaoh's life, which is connected to why God created Joseph for such a time as this. God knows how to put a dream that's going to bring about the existence of what's not yet been seen, but now being revealed because a need has been identified. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear you, Holy Spirit. Oh, I hear you, Holy Spirit. And so we see right here, now Pharaoh, it says because he was upset and so it says, the chief brother said, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servant and put me in the ward in the captain's guards of the house. And so we're right here. And the and the, the butler's now telling Pharaoh that when he was cast in the jail, that there was a man that interpreted his dream. You see, every dream is revealing a need to be interpreted. But God prepares a man, a seed for the rain. Here comes the rain. Here come the rain. And so we know right here that Pharaoh in verse 14, he sent hastily for Joseph. And so the Pharaoh told Joseph the dream he had. Joseph in verse um, 16 said, Joseph answered Pharaoh said, is it not in me? God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Wait, hold up, hold up. Look at, look at, look at 15. I'm gonna go back to that. Do you see this? And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have dreamed a dream and there was none that can inter interpret it. And I have heard of thee that thou canst and understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God, it says, it is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said to Joseph in my dream, behold, and he began to tell him the dream. And so it says, when he had eaten and blah, 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 go all the way down, it says all the way down to verse 25. Uh, let's see. And I told him and the magicians. Okay. And verse 25, it says, and Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what is about what he is about to do, what God is about to do. And when it goes on down, uh, it says, it was a part where it says, because you have dreamed it twice, that means it's going to happen. Um, here we go right here. In verse 32, it says, and 32, it says, and for that, the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. When, see, you see this is happening. I, oh, Lord, help me articulate it as you're showing me right now, Holy Spirit. Because of what he is already revealed by the revelation of the word and, 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 and how things travel at light years and how Colonel's time is waiting for the manifestation of what was spoken in Cairo's time. And so we see it. When is the appointed time for delivery? God begins to what? He begins to identify the need with the seed. He now what? Prepares the need because the seed has now identified why seed is a is, is related to time and season and everything under the sun has a time season and purpose and so this is what seed is carrying and so when there's a seed planted in you and that seed is now identified with the original seed of which God spoke it now the need emerges and so what we see here was going to go back to what the older head posted this is what dream does. Remember, let me read this and let me go to dreams. Remember dreams. 
He had me say at 801. Let me read it again. At uh yeah, at 904 on one day. No, this is 1249 on one day. At 12 at 1249 on one day. Uh, and then 1244. At 1244, it says, if you have no need of God, there is no need of your purpose by which God has created something that your purpose will fulfill. At 801 on January 20th, four days before that, I believe, or how many days, two days before that, he had me right. Until there is a need for something, it does not exist. It is not until after there is a need then man has a dream or a vision of what seems to not have existed in their human knowledge now comes into existence. Dreams now. So now Pharaoh has been given something that has never existed in his natural thoughts. Now it's coming to fruition. Dreams by definition means the thoughts or series of thoughts of a person in sleep. Okay. We apply dream in a singular, in the singular, to a, a series of thoughts which occupies the mind of, of sleeping, of a person sleeping, which he imagines he has a view of real things or transactions. In his dream, man, when he is sleeping, now imagine things that are coming into view that seems real that they have not experienced before. Now you're seeing things where people say, how can you imagine something that don't exist if it never existed? Well, it has existed just outside of our human knowledge. A dream is a series of thoughts um, it says, nor under the command of reason. Dreams are not under the command of reason and hence, or any wild or irregular thoughts. So in scriptures, dreams were sometimes impressions on the mind of sleeping persons made by divine agency, like in Genesis 20 and also in Matthews 2, where in the dream, God began to visit, visit Joseph by way of the angel. So when it's time for those things that see non-existence in the earth realm, God will give a dream or a vision, which is an impression upon the mind that now your mind is now opened up to what? The spiritual realm, which is what? Inside Christ Jesus or which is inside God. And the things that never seem to have existed or never happened before, now creation comes about in the person's mind. Why? Because now the mind of Christ is in operation. What is the mind of Christ? That in the beginning when God created and everything that was created was created by him, for him, and in him, which is Jesus. And so the only way we can imagine something don't exist is because we are, are imagining a thing that already had existed inside Christ Jesus. When it's time to birth forth. Oh, Jesus is real. Now, now let's go. Let's bring it all the way down. And let's go to Deuteronomy. Let's go uh, right here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay, I think I read that to Wish the word is fast like creating the power. Let me read this really quick. Oh, no, God calls it to rain. How could it rain? Okay. Okay, y'all remember. Oh, I don't know if I should read that yet. It's certainly God calls it to rain. Uh, let me Let me go here. <laughs> I don't know if I should read that yet. I'm going to get ready to stop. I don't know if I should read that yet. So let's look at this word matar. Let's see how this all developed. Remember, I was going to share with you the backdrop uh, of um, how Egypt watered their grounds with their foot. On yesterday, he began to uh, have me explain. I'm just going to just reiterate just a little bit. In Deuteronomy chapter, uh, I believe it's chapter 11, uh, verse 11. Um, it begins to express um, how, um, da, 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 da. Uh, where is it at? And okay, so in Deuteronomy 11, 10, it says, for the land whither thou goest in to possess is not as the land of Egypt from which ye came out, where thou sowest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a as a garden of herbs, but the land whither ye go to possess it, it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. 
this is where he had me uh, reveal or speak on yesterday. I want to pick up from here and we're going to go back a little further because God, this was not the first mention of this type of rain. And there was things predicated on the children of Israel about this rain or how the rain was going to come forth. And this is part of the birthing. And so right here, we know that when it says it was watering with their foot because of how the irrigation system of Egypt and that ancient civilization was, there was a Nile River in Egypt. And so what they would do is they would dig long ditches that would lead back to their field so the flow of those waters can flow through the ditches and so they would dig it and so any time that they want the water to come forth they 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 that or they want the water to stop they will use their foot to kick the dirt over that part to stop the water and so anytime they need the water to express itself and come forth and water the fields they will use their foot and remove the dirt and so this is what we call the first faucet system of ancient civilization and so that's what this scripture means when it says that they water that uh, where they water us with their foot but the water that the rain that god is speaking of he said the land i'm sending you to don't have those irrigation system because the, the word the, the 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 lowest part let me go here to my notes let me read this correctly uh let's see where is it at um right here uh, okay will not grant rain. Okay, I don't want that one yet. Uh, let me, hold on, I'm trying to see. There was a part where I had wrote, oh my gosh, I can't get through all this. This is too much. Oh my gosh, this is too much. Let me see. Okay, so that's, that's a lot. Let me just go here. That's a lot. That's a lot of revelation. I don't know how much can be held. I don't want to over overdo it. Let me just explain this. So the land where God was sending them, it was on hills. He said it's going to be hills and, and mountain ranges and, and things like that. And so they had to depend on the rainfall when they entered the land of promise. But God did that for a reason because the, the rain had a significant covenant with those who really want an intimate relationship and only have their soul dependency for God. See, Egypt had it all. Egypt had everything that if a person was was presented with it, it, they would choose Egypt because it already had the water in, in the valley. They didn't have to wait on seasons of rainfall from God. They didn't have to depend on God. And so um, right here, when we go to, 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 to uh, when we go to Genesis, we're going to see the backdrop. I want to uh, read this. Um, it's uh, a Jewish study, what is his name? Rabbi Abraham Liptag. And the late, he's the late, the late Rabbi Abraham Liptag. And so he did this Hebrew uh, contextual study. And so when I was reading this, um, let me go down to Genesis. I want to see Genesis. Let me find it. Genesis. Uh, 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 okay, here we go. Let's look at... I think this is Genesis. Let me find it. Genesis. Is this Genesis 11? One moment. Let me see if this is Genesis 11. Is this 13? I will grant rain. I think this is Deuteronomy. But the land where they go is 11. But where they go to the land is water. Let me go to Genesis. Excuse me. Let me find it real quick. Genesis. Is this Genesis 11? I know I had this written. Okay, this is it. Uh, Genesis, Genesis, one moment. I have Deuteronomy. I will grant the rain. Okay. That's Deuteronomy. That's Deuteronomy. Please forgive me. That was Deuteronomy. We're still in the same place. So in Deuteronomy 11, he was saying that God was saying how he would grant the rain if they obeyed him. He said, I will grant the rain for your land in the season. Then you shall eat and be satisfied. Be careful lest she lured after other gods, for God will be angry and he will shut up the skies and there will be no rain. Rain is matar. Rain is matar. And so it was predicated on their obedience, their covenant, their intimate relationship, and their dependency on God, this type of rain. I had some pictures that I'm going to put up, but I think for the sake of time, I might have to do it another time. I had these different planets because it's different types of rain, and you guys probably have studied it and probably already know it, that on certain, on certain uh, planets, 
it rains, but what the rain produces is not like rain on earth where it produced water. However, God, he defied, oh, I hear you, Holy Ghost. He's given to me, he's explained to me now. Oh my gosh, I got to put this picture up. I got I to gotta put this picture up. I got to send this picture to you guys. I got to put this up so I can show you. I got to show you this. I got to show you this. He just gave me the interpretation of this. Let me find this really quick. Let me, um, let me find this really quick. Uh, oh, where is it? Okay. Uh, here we go. Let me find this. Rain on planets. Let me find. Okay. It says, Mary, well, okay, okay, let me. Let me get to your question. I see you pull it up. Let me find this picture. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, how can I share this? I need to open this. Okay. So let me try to share my screen so I can show you all this. Let me try to share my screen real quick so I can show you this. Uh, Share their screen. Here we go. Okay. So you guys see this? Hopefully you can see this. Hopefully it's showing up. Hopefully it's showing up. Okay, there we go. See, these are different types of rain. Rains on different worlds. So Earth has water. Venus has sulfuric acid, which is sulfur, which is fire. Um What's this other one? I forgot what other one. This one, this other planet, it rains glass. Neptune rains diamond. Another planet rains iron. And uh, other planets rains different one like methane. What he's giving me right here, just, just now as I'm talking, remember, oh my God, he's segueing, but stay with me. It's still going with it. He just showed this revelation. Remember in, in the book of, uh, of Exodus, before they came out, God sent those plagues, right? And this has everything to do with what he just had me mention a while ago about why on the seventh day rested and had to depend on, on God because God was defying the, the gods, the Pagan gods that was worshipped, whether it's the god of Venus, because when they worship these planets or these stars, the they the each plague that God sent represented the god that was associated with it. So when God sent the frogs, it's because they worship the 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 mythological god. Those gods are associated with different planets. Remember, God sent the the brimstone and fire. God rained down those sulfuric uh, balls. He will, what? He began to defy and use the God of Venus against them. He began to what? Allow another atmosphere that God used now to rain down upon the enemy of which the enemy served that God. And God used it against them. He just showed me that. Oh my God. Because earth only produces the rainfall of water. So how is the earth raining down different things that God called? Why? Because he's calling on the other gods that they pray to creation instead of creator. He is using the creation of which they pray to, to now what? Come in in the earth and defy the laws of nature. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I might have to stop. This might be too much. This might be too much. I hear you right now, Holy Ghost. I hear you right now. There are different types of matar. There are different types of rain that God will use, y'all. God will isolate a certain geographical location just to experience what God is trying to reveal or get across. Oh, my Jesus is real. Let me, oh, Lord. I, I don't know. Let me, let Jesus is real. Let, let me, let me. Let me, let me continue. Let me continue. And let me stop off. This is a lot. This is a lot. Let me go. Let, let's go. Let's go further up. Let me just go real quick. If we go to Genesis 12 in Genesis 12, this begins, we begin to see when God began to tell Abraham to uproot his family. Right. And, and then to, and to uh, uproot his family from Mesopotamia now and to travel to the land of Canaan, which is the land of promise, which is in Genesis chapter 12, verses one through three. And remember his nephew Lot was was always mentioned during Abraham's travel, which is in Genesis 4, 
uh, Genesis 12, verses 4 through 6, and also in Genesis 13, 1 through 2. For the sake of time, I'm giving you the scriptures, and I'm going to give you the backdrop that's leading up to this rain, the prophetic revelation of the rain. And rain, remember, is matar, M-A-T-A-R. And matar, let me give this to you real quick. Matar means this. Matar means a physical proof that something in heaven can come down to earth. <laughs> Rain in Hebrew is matar, which means physical proof that something in heaven can come down to earth. Keep that in mind. What has been written in the heaven, in the firmament. Remember, God created the heavens, but the rakia, the heaven, has the written prophecies of what is to come to pass. Okay? Now, when we see in Genesis, this is a backdrop of how this rain came about and why the need, the necessity, and the dependency upon God is necessary for God to send this kind of rain that we need to water the seed for whatever, the, uh, for the birthing of it. So in the development of it, um, because... Abraham, at the time when God told him to leave, he had no children. And so he had no successor. So nevertheless, Lot became his successor. Uh, Abraham assumed for Lot to become. He assumed. He didn't, but he assumed because Abraham left without a seed. So he figured his, 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 his he figured that Lot would become his successor, but God had something else in mind. Uh, and so, nevertheless, after returning from the trip to Egypt, a quarrel broke out. We see that it said there was a quarrel between, let's go to Genesis, so we can see that. Genesis 13, 8 and 9. Genesis 13, this is the one scripture we'll go to. Genesis 13, and I'm going to close up to 13, 8. Genesis 13 and 8. And Abraham said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee between me and thee and between my brethren and thy herdmen for we be brethren is not the whole land before thee separate thyself i pray thee from me if thou wilt take the left hand then i will go to the right or if thou depart to the right hand then i will go to the left and lot look at this lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of jordan he beheld the Jordan Valley. This valley was connected to the Nile River in Egypt, which was neither the north or the south, but it was the east where Sodom was at. Lot disconnected himself from the covenant. Look what happened, y'all. And so it says, and it was well watered everywhere. He chose Egypt, y'all. He chose where they watered the ground with their foot over the rain. Y'all, look at this. And it says, uh, it, it was well watered. I'm in verse 10, Genesis 13 and 10. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east. And they separated themselves, the one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, the promised land. Bethel, the house of God. And Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Now look at this. Now look at the history behind this. Oh, Jesus is real. Let's paint this picture. So let's, let's see what happened. And so no, Abraham suggested to Lot either the south or the north. Which, which is left or right, not the east or the west, not the east or the west, because uh, uh, Kadim in Hebrew represent east. So in other words, Abraham was standing in Bethel and, and he's offering, look at this, y'all, Abraham is standing in Bethel, which is the house of God, God's house, and he's trying to get get Lot to take one of the places that is upon the hills that needs to what? Have dependency upon God for the rainfall. He didn't want it. Y'all, this is important. Listen here, I'm gonna show you why. So Lot chooses neither option. Instead, he chooses, he chooses the Jordan Valley. Now remember, however, the connection between Lot's decision to go east 
and his most recent experience in Egypt. His decision to go east was because he came in contact with Egypt. So we see after this, let me go all the way down. Lot opts, look what here, Lot opts out. He chooses the more secure life along the banks of Jordan, similar to the lifestyle of Egypt by the banks of the Nile River. So this is what noted. This connects the river valley. This valley is associated with Egypt, y'all. Now, Lot departs towards Sodom for the good life, while Abraham remains in Beth El at the heart of the land of what God has promised. God's seed, a promise, his promise is in the seed. And we depart from the seed, we have no need for the rain for the seed. Now a different rain is gonna come associated with a different seed. Lot didn't know that the seed, the nature of Sodom and Gomorrah had already been ordained from the beginning. He chose something that identified a different rain because the rain that God sent for Sodom was according to the need that uh, what the seed was producing. The seed identified the need of the rain of fire in Sodom and Gomorrah because what it was producing. He shouldn't have chosen, y'all, Joe okay to me. Let me keep on. It says in, in, in Genesis 13, 11, he traveled away from from he who began the creation. Lot went away from the one who started creation, which is God. He said, I can no longer endure being with Abraham nor his God. This is what he said. So what he did was he decided to a uh, life striving for dependency on God is what Abraham chose. But a life where a man prefers independence of God represent what Lot chose, which is going to determine and predicate the type of rain that's coming on the sea. Oh Lord, we about to see a birthing. So when we go back, we're going to see that biblical theme of Matar. This whole setting of Matar, which is rain, is fundamental because it actually begins at creation. We went there, remember, in Genesis 2 and 4, where God, what? He could not send rain on the seed until the seed identified the man, okay? These are the generations of the creation of heaven. These are the birth of heaven. And there was no shrub of the field had yet grown and in the land and no grace had yet sprouted because God had not yet sent rain, matar, in the land. Nor was there man to tend to the field. The need of man and his purpose had to come into existence. That means the seed had to identify man's need. So that when the seed began to birth from the rain, there was somebody that had purpose of why they exist to tend to that which was created. I hope y'all get me. I, I hope y'all understand. Let me go on down and we'll have to finish this. I'm going to wrap this up. Um, uh, let me see where my notes I want to contrast and compare to. Uh, um, da -da 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 -da. So because... Um, uh, da -da -da -da. So man, which is Adam, had not been yet created to work the fields. And so man had not recognized the significance of rain. Let me read this. Because Adam, for man had not yet been created to work the field. And thus no one had yet recognized the importance of rain. And when man was created and recognized the importance, then man now prayed for rain. Then the rain fell on the trees and everything grew. So when the seed identifies the need and the need identifies the purpose that's in the seed, now man can now dream because he sees there is an important need for the thing that's not existing, but that I need what? In order to what? Grow. So now I know the significance. I can pray for the rain because now I come into the knowledge of why I need the rain. Is because I recognize why the seed needs to grow and it cannot grow because until I came into the acknowledgement that I need the rain. Until you recognize your purpose and the reason why something needs to exist for which you was created for, you don't know to pray for rain. Now, rain is not just natural rain, but rain is the revelation that the Holy Spirit gives us to know what to pray for that God has put in it to what us to now voice it, to pray. So nothing can exist 
Y'all, oh Jesus, let me calm down. Nothing can exist. Are you still with me? Is this boring, y'all? I don't see no, let me see if I have something. I don't see nothing. Uh, let's see, I think Avengers said something. Prophetess. Prophetess evangelists have a question. What's the question? Somebody has a question? Did I miss somebody's question? Or is that a delayed response I'm just seeing? Is that a delayed response? God bless you, my sister. So let me get to the nitty gritty and close off. Let me get to the nitty gritty and close off because I want a prophetic, this is prophetic revelation. However, God want to speak some more to somebody. He want to speak some more to somebody. And so if you want your answer, you got to pull on it. Let me, let me show you this right here. So this is what he had me write earlier today. Da -da -da -da, where is it? Matar, that falls in the land of Israel. Uh, acts only as a baron of the children. Let's see, where is this? Okay, so rain right here, rain that fought, rain that fell upon the land of Israel, just like the dependency where Abraham went. It begins to say right here, it acts only as a barometer. So rain, remember, rain is God's vehicle and his way of communication. And so rain that falls upon the children of Israel land, the rain that falls upon your land, God is doing two things. He's not only using it as a barometer of the children of Israel faithfulness to God, but also serves as a vehicle of divine retribution. Y'all, do you know what retribution means? Let me look it up because he's having me look it up now. He didn't tell me to look it up before. Let's see. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I hear you. <laughs> look, he's doing two things. So when you depend on God to send the rain, just like the children of Israel compared to what? The children of Israel, the, the people of Egypt. Two different rains they experience. Retribution is punishment inflicted on someone as vengeance for a wrong or criminal act. Unfortunately, had not the angel of God came in because, because Abraham prayed for Lot, because God showed Abraham what was to come to Sodom and Gomorrah just by his choice? And his choice was what in a place that what began to rain down God's divine retribution. So when God is blessing God's people, and when God begins to line up in the obedience and, and they begin to depend on, on God for the rainfall, what they rejected and what they turned away from, which was the enemy's offer, now God begins to use their obedience, their dependence on him to what now produce divine retribution. Okay. Okay. I don't know if anybody got that. So God uses Matar to communicate with a nation. And so this is why we get so many things. Rain could be good and rain could be bad. If rain is withheld, back in that time, the rain that was withheld was God's way of showing that the nation was in disobedience. The nation behavior, now God withheld rain. Okay, remember Elisha the prophet? He began to ask God to withhold the rain for a space of three and a half years. Why? That was God the divine retribution because of what they was begin to serve different gods and pray to different gods and God defied their God. Okay, let me move ahead, ahead. Let me move ahead. Let me move ahead. I think I got that. So we're looking here. Hills and mountain ranges that Lot didn't choose. So when God say hills and, and, and mountain range, remember there's a scripture that says that the people said, oh, he's the God of the valleys. They didn't think God was the God of hills. Let me find that because he's bringing that to me right now. He bringing it to I know y'all know that scripture. Y'all just bear with me. Let me find it. Uh, he is not the God of the hills. I think this is in, okay, in First Kings, in First Kings. In 1 Kings 20, in 1 Kings 20, real quick, y'all remember this, 1 Kings 20, 1 Kings 20. He's bringing this right now, 1 Kings 20. And, and this is going to express the next revelation of this matar. It says, in 1 Kings 20 and verse 28, and there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, thus said the Lord, because the Syrians have said, the Lord is God of hills, but he is not the God of valleys. Therefore will I deliver all the great multitude into thy hand and he shall know that I am the Lord. You see this? 
You see how they said it? They said, oh, he's just the God of the hills and the mountain ranges. Why? Because they knew the covenant that God made with the children of Israel, as well as the children of Israel relied on the rain, what? On the hills? Because that's what God sent them to. The promised land had hills and mountain ranges. So hills and mountain ranges reflect the dependency and the need and intimate relationship with God. Whereas Lot's eyes was on the valley where it was well watered, right? And so right here, the Syrians mistaken, mistaken that they, they only serve the God of the hills, not knowing that God is the God of the valleys. And so this is why God divided retribution. I hear the, I hear the revelation. I'm getting excited about the revelation. I don't know if I'm painting a greater picture right here or not we see right here the enemy's only eyes was focused on the promise of what god had spoken over the children of israel and so they did not know he was the god of all creation why because their dependency was on the wall on the ground that was watered by the foot so they didn't think the god of the heavens could come down to the god of the, to the earth and begin to disturb what they could what they was all comfortable in so he said they said oh no he's only the god of the hills he's not the god of the valleys god is not confound He's the God of all creation, and they fail to realize that. Just because they depend on the rain and the children of Israel depend on the God of the hills, they, they also had to depend on the God of the valley. And so God expressed himself. Let me calm down. God expressed himself in the valley because they try to confine him only to one part of the earth or one part of creation. And that's their mistake. And that's the mistake of people in your life. So let me bring this all the way to a conclusion and see how all this ties into you. Because everything is applicable and everything points back to Jesus. The rain points back to Jesus. We want the kind of rain that's going to rain upon the, the seed of which why it exists. Because your need has been identified. And so anytime God is now bringing everything and now things have to come to be, which is Haya, when things have to come to be, that's when the vision, the prophecy the prophecy like Joseph until the word of prophecy comes to pass, the word of God tries. Now that everything is now coming to the time of things being fulfilled, like he had me release over this ministry and anyone who, who receives it. This is a year of time, right time happenings. This is the year where we see God made it happen. What did God make happen? He made happen the things that we've been asking him to make happen. We had to come into alignment. We had to come into the sea. Do we want the easy way where it looks where it was well watered and, and, and the things that's easy to come? Or do you want to go into a land that's promised, yet it requires you to have to depend upon the God to send the kind of rain that won't destroy your land, but that will prosper your land? I see this kind of rain that God is releasing is a rain that begins to birth. Okay. It's the kind of rain that God begins to send to birth the seed that has identified the need. Anytime God is time for now for creativity and adventures, God now locates the original one that he puts the original idea of the creation in that man, in a sleep, in a dream. So now man begins to what? Envision something that never existed out in the earth, but existed in another time realm. What time realm? Eternity. Eternity holds all things. Okay. I don't know how to say this. Uh, um, yeah. Because God always is and always was. Jesus said, I, I am he who is, who was and is to come. Do you know when he said, he that is and was and is to come, he takes resident over past, present, and future that repeats itself. That means he's already been there, seen that, done that with you before you came into the manifestation of it. It already had existed. You come into the knowledge of what had already existed that you didn't know existed. That problem that God allowed to be created only put you in a place of a need because now it was time for him to birth forth that seed. So now we say, God, send the rain. <laughs> oh, I don't know if y'all hear me. Jesus is real. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going I'm to close out. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. I'm going to stop right here. Uh, let me ask you a question with this. At 504, I heard the Holy Spirit on January 18th ask me this. I want to ask you this. How can you call God into remembrance of a memory? How can you call God into remembrance of a memory? When the original memory is not yours. 
when he said, bring me in remembrance of my word. How can you bring God in remembrance of a memory when the original memory is not yours? Where are you getting your memory from? This revelation teaching should now be able to equip you to answer that. When God said, bring me in remembrance, he's not, how can you even speak what God spoke to you and bring God back in that remembrance if the original word that God spoke to you did not come from a place that never, that you see that did not exist, but he had a release from a place where it did exist. So now you got the capacity to bring God in remembrance of a word that originated from him, not your own memory. Our memory only contains that which God has purposed us to come into. That's why I hear you, Holy Ghost. That's why the Holy Ghost said, I will bring you in remembrance of all things, all things visible and invisible, all things that did not exist, but in your imagination now can exist because that's the memory of God of what he called you to do that now you come into the revelation that I need that seed. So now I'm bringing God in remembrance of a memory that he originally put in me. Y'all, I'm working hard at it. Oh, y'all, this revelation keep coming. This is what he asked me. This is what he said. It says, when he had Right, what he said. When he allowed ordained events in which one experiences to now have a memory of it. You, like he said, had me say, how can an amputee have, oh no, how can someone born without limbs have memory of not having it unless the thing that should exist carries the memory of what it should do? That's why when an amputee removes the leg, the memories of those phantom pains are still there because it came in contact with what it was originally designed to do. The nature of it, the behavior of it. Oh, come on, y'all, Jesus is real. And so when certain events happen in our life, <laughs> or day events, we now have the memory of how we should react or behave to it because he already put it. Oh, y'all, I think I'm preaching. This is probably too much. Let me, this is too, this is too much. I have some more, but I'm going to stop right here. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how so long I might. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll save this rest. <laughs> this going to go beyond. This go beyond. I might share the revelation, some other revelation what he gave. This will stress someone mind. This was, this will put, this is, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. This, these revelations that he had me write. It makes it takes you outside the box. So I begin to ask. He begin to ask questions that he already had the answer to because now he's bringing me to the knowledge of what it is that God wanted me to know already. But now I have a need to want to know because He put that need in me because of the seed that has to now be birthed out, and that requires the rain. Lord God, begin to send the rain because there is now a need that's presented, and that need once again is reminder, Lord God. That need identifies the purpose of why your people exist. And if they have no need of you, Lord God, there is no need or reason for their purpose by which you have created something that their purpose now must fulfill. When you have a desire or now a dream impresses upon your mind to do something that you ain't never did before, it's because the seed is needed to now produce according to the need of what you desire for it. And so now you need God to send the rain to now cause growth on that seed that he planted in you from the beginning. I hope somebody hear me. I hope someone is hearing me. This prophetic rain, you don't want him to rain sulfur. You don't want him to call on another atmospheric, atmosphere rain because we choose not to depend upon him. This is why we're going to begin to see all these different events because people begin to realize the creation that they are worshiping. God can cause that atmosphere to come into the earth zone. This is why things that people don't, they deny that it exists is because they don't fathom that that can actually happen because they're using their mind, not knowing that God has prepared something already that they don't know exists, but does exist. That's why the imagination is something else. And we got to be careful what we're imagining. We got to be careful also what we're imagining. That's why he said, cast out all imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Because he knew Satan was going to try to interject 
his own perversion to what? Distort the nature of God. Why? Because everything that exists behaves according to the nature of why God created it. And if he can pervert the original nature of God, he can pervert, he can birth out perversions that's according to the lustful need and desire of man, which now births out demons. Oh, y'all, in Jesus' name, I gotta stop. I don't know. Amen, in Jesus' name, I'm gonna stop. He's feeding a whole lot more and I just don't know how much and it, I, I don't want to know. I don't know how much someone can contain, but I'm going to stop right there because I don't want to. That's a lot. So we absorb that. Uh, we absorb that. I have so many pages of what he had begin to speak. Nevertheless, I'm going to stop right there and see if anyone has any questions. Glory to God. I see only four on here so far. And see, that's the thing. I, I don't want to take my eyes off of God. Or, or I'm not going to take my eyes off of God. But nevertheless, that's the thing. So most, most people can't. Um, if it's too much revelation or too much word, it's, this is meaty word, y'all. This is meaty word. And how valuable is the word of God? How valuable is the word of God to you? Because this is revelation. This is revelation. It's not saying that God doesn't reveal revelation, but this is a time mark stamp. And this is not so much revelation, but how much someone can, can contain, um, even with ourselves, when God re begins to reveal things to you, he knows how much your spirit can contain at that time that we need to process and absorb this. I don't look at the numbers of it because sometimes I know I'm like, God, this is so rich. And sometimes it makes me want to just archive it and not because uh, people will not acknowledge the fact of what God is revealing through certain individuals unless it's coming through household names. But I thank God for his name that is great in our lives. And I thank God that he's going to send rain to those that has a need that lines up with according to the purpose that God has put and impregnated in the seed. And now is a time of prophecies being fulfilled in our lives. I thank God for those who chose the land of God and not the land of Egypt in the East. The East, y'all study this, East winds always bring judgment. East winds always bring judgment. God always point us towards the North or the South. The North points it points us back to God because his, his city, the kingdom, the, it says, uh, great is the Lord in, in, in Psalms 48. It says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and the mountains of his holiness. Beautiful situation, the joy of the whole earth. Is Mount Zion on the side of the north, the city of the great king? And so he will always point us in a direction that leads back to him not away from him. And anything that leads you away from the compass of God, God sends another rain of retribution, divine retribution, that will now birth out his need for that seed and the rain. I want us to be on this side. And so I don't know if anyone has... Um, Glory to God. I know there's a lot of needs over here that God is, is now time to birth out. And so now time, now time, right timing is for this kind of rain, the matar. Because some of us have solely in our hearts said, God, I depend on you. And God said, because I'm not only the God of the hills and not only God of the mountains, I'm not about to confound and confound the enemy who's been attacking you in a valley place and said that you that your God is only a God of a certain region. No, he's the God of all regions and all creation. He's about to send rain. And this rain is about to birth out the seed that God has already spoken into you. And this is the reason why your existence, this is the reason why it, you, God had to allow you to come to a place of hunger and a need and dependency. This is why it looked like everything was a drought and everything was a famine because God needed a people who truly and solely depend on the God of all creation and not the gods that worship creation. He needed us to depend on the God of all creation, the creator, and not the gods that worship the creation and not the creator. And so since then, the distinction now has been made, are we to the north or the south? Or are we the east? 
We are the North and the South. And Lord God, I thank you right now. I thank you, Father God, for the capability and the authority to now command the heavens. Because your word said in Job, Almighty God, that we shall decree a thing and it shall be established. And the reason why we can now decree a thing and it be established, because it was already established for it to come forth and for the reason why it needs to now exist. Now is the time, oh God, for your people to come into the fulfillment of prophecy, a word spoken of God. Hallelujah. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost of God, I thank you for locating every one of your people right now, Almighty God. And Lord God, I thank you for sending your sword, Holy Spirit of God, to cut down every demonic blade that tried to, oh God, swallow up their seed. I hear and see you, Holy Ghost. Lord God, I thank you for sending the sword of the spirit to cut down, chop down, swallow up every demonic blade that tried to sprout up in their field of where you have, oh God, birthed the seed of their purpose. Now, Lord God, I decree and declare, I command the heavens, oh God, to now open up and adhere to your word, oh God. For Lord God, on this night, oh God, heaven and earth, oh God, will now begin to testify of what has been written, oh God, in the firmament, in the lives of your people, oh God. Now, Lord God, send forth the rain, almighty God. Lord God, I decree and declare, oh God, the north, the south, South winds begin to blow in, oh God, every rain, oh God, in their season right now, oh God. And Lord God, I decree and declare, oh God, the rainfall to pour down, Lord God, up on every person, oh God, who will come into alignment, oh God, with your will. Lord God, I thank you, oh God, that the seed has now met their need and the rain is now coming forth. Now, Lord God, I thank you, oh God, that it will be an instantaneous harvest, oh God. Lord God, let it be, haya, let it be, oh God, haya, in their life. Let everything, oh God, that they have purpose. You have purpose in their heart. You have purpose in their mind. What is purpose? Purpose is identifying the thing or why it was existed or created. Now, Lord God, I thank you, oh God, that the thing that was planted in them, which is the seed of your word and promise, is now coming to fruition of why it now has to exist at this appointed time. Let it be so, oh God, in their lives. I call it forth. Haya, come to be right now, oh God. And I thank you, oh God, that the rains will not withhold itself in their lives. Pour down the rainfall, oh God. Pour down the rainfall. Pour down the rainfall and water every seed of promise, every seed of purpose. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, send the rain. Send the rain. Because now the need knows why it has to exist. Until the need for it, almighty God, comes into fruition. It is not until the need. It is not until after there was a need that now man has a vision for every vision, oh God. As like Joseph, for every dream that your people has had and they didn't know how or when, how is this gonna come to pass? How is this gonna happen? Lord God, your reign has made it happen. Your reign has made it happen. And I thank you, oh God, that everything that they have been impregnated with would know how to behave itself according to the nature of what you impregnated in them. Lord God, with that being said, let me explain that. What you are carrying has the nature of God or why God impregnated you with. That which you're about to give birth knows what it's supposed to do. The rain has already been assigned to water upon your seed. Whatever that seed is that God has birthed into you and given you right now, I thank you, Almighty God, that the essential necessity is being communicated through your reign. I thank you, Heavenly Father, for this divine transportation being transmitted, imparted. Okay, I see. Um, this is strange. It's came and it went so quick. Okay, I, let me say it like this. It looked like it was coming and leaving, but I see it is it's staying right here. And I want to say this word resource center. Um, Lord, be speaking to me because I, let me just say this. Let me <laughs> say what I'm seeing. Is somebody on here or somebody, you know, 
If you want what God has, come off the timeline and come and identify yourself on here. If you want this rain to identify your seed and your need so God can release the word that's going to release your rain. Uh-huh. <laughs> Like he had me say on yesterday, some people see just want to stay up on the soil of the ground that just associate and connects itself and just want part of it. But if you want all of it, come on, <laughs> come on. Yeah, let, let me look up this word. Let me look what I'm seeing. He's showing me uh, uh, somebody on here. Uh, this means. OK, so. What is that word? Re I don't know if that's Spanish. Oh, no, that's, is that Greek? Okay, so this word, it must be in Greek. Rizo. And then part, it must be Latin. It says, a place which provides information, equipment, and support. Um, it's a resource center means advocacy, focus, uh, student group, commons, interest um, that has been granted. Uh, the space and the funding. So whomever this is, God is about to grant the space and the funding because I heard and saw resource. I saw it come in the spirit. I thought I was about to go by really quick, but it stayed off to my right. And I heard and saw the Holy Spirit say resource center. So a resource center meaning you must need the funds and the space needed for what it is why God birthed this uh uh, giving you this plan. Okay, this is something he told me, he shared with me earlier this afternoon. Um, uh, what time was it at? It was like between uh, 10, 38 or 12 something. And he began to talk to me about planted, what he has planted and he separated. And he was gonna have me post this and I'm gonna spell it like this. P-L-A-N hyphen T-E-D. Because in planted, it was already planned. In planted, what he planted in you already was planned and has the plans to go with it. And so when he plants something, it was already planned and it came with the plans of God. So now when it's time to bring it forth, he now provides the providential help of heaven, which is the resources, the space to what fund and secure the very idea of uh, that he put in you because now you have a need for the thing that should exist until there's a need it don't exist when the seed identifies the need now he brings the rain and the rain is the resources the rain of heaven now waters it and so that um so that's for somebody also on here so lord god i thank you i thank you lord god for the resources of heaven funding and backing lord god this idea, this creativity, this invention, which you have given, oh God, this person, oh God, in the name of Jesus. What is this? Um, uh, okay, so also, part of a resource center, it collects um, and organizes the material that's useful for people. So even with this, with what, whoever this is that God has given something, he has given you an expansion, a development. Of, okay, let me put this down because I hear him. He's given this person, uh, he has birthed in their capacity of which he has given them, but he had to enlarge their capacity because now their desire is now lining up with God's desire to now provide other material. So it's not just getting resources, but it's collecting other uh, types of materials and organizing that's going to be beneficial to a people, to uh, a target. Sometimes, okay, I hear and see the Holy Ghost said this person has a target area, like you have a target audience. And so when you have a target audience, it might be a couple of people that has a target audience. It, 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 it supplies for those who, you know, yeah, when you do have a target audience, when you have a development plan, you have a target audience, even though you can uh, provide for uh, other people, this resource system is this resource center type. It begins to collect and gather materials that's designed for people that has a certain need of what a person is offering. But I see this development plan uh, expanding. I see, uh, 
I don't know if the person's on here. I don't want to give too much because I don't know if it's identifying. Is this identifying someone's need before I even speak any further? Is there anyone on here that the Holy Spirit of God, the rain is trying to locate this person's need? Because I don't, I'm not going to keep speaking. I want to know, is the person on here or attached to somebody on here that knows somebody? Because the rain, the Holy Spirit is trying to what identify the need. He's trying to identify that need. Um, glory to God. Glory to God. I don't want to keep releasing more. It could be more than one, but I want to keep releasing the person out home on here because I don't want the enemy to try to come steal the seed of the word. Glory to God. Glory to God. Um, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let me see. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, um, so, no, 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 no. Hallelujah. Okay. Was anyone else? I oh, Le sombre te coria te ya cumbre te lo sombre tan lo sora mai. Le tremindo sombre contra la nora baja le tonia. Glory to God. I see someone posted something. Um. Oh, okay. Glory to God. Okay. Okay. So I um I'm gonna look up because I don't know what this is, but I'm gonna look up this and I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna when I look this up, I'm gonna know that it's you, uh prophetess. I'm gonna know whether or not this is you because of let me look up this really quick. Thank you, because I don't want to just give this to anybody. But whomever identify, whomever they believe that God is identifying this with them. Um, glory to God. Oh, oh. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Y'all forgive me. I'm talk He's talking to me before I even look this up. I'm hearing him say something, but I got to proceed on because <laughs> I got to see. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, prophetess. Okay, I had to look up. Now, you probably have a definitive meaning uh, uh, of your role and duties, but I had to look this up myself and then associate it with the spiritual side of what it is because God is speaking not just, he placed you in a, he put your he put what's in you in a place that needs what's in you. But at the same time, what they got is going to now, um, is going to now assist, is going to now, um, oh, it's a better word than assist. Um, uh, it's not just they need you, uh, you need what they got. And God, they, they, need what's in you however what's in you need them because what they have got to fund or support the need that's in you let me let me let me explain this because i'm seeing it because part of this it says what does a business development director do now this is just me looking it up real quick because he told me to look it up and i would know by it by reading this so the director is responsible for growing a company business okay I hear you, Holy Ghost. Okay, let me finish this. Can I finish this real quick, Holy Ghost? <laughs> I won't forget. And just remind me of uh, there's two stories he's bringing to me in the Bible. And so they're responsible for growing the company's business, increasing revenue, finding new business opportunities, and building the company brand name. The thing that you are supporting, God will use to now support what God has put in you to build and expand. Okay, hear me closely. Uh, hear me closely. And so... You already got the development skill. Okay, here's the two. <laughs> here are the two. Here are the two examples God showed me when he began to take me to the definition. Now, you have a greater uh, definition. I'm sure they told you your greater roles and responsibilities and things like that. But this is just based on what the Holy Spirit is showing me now. And so it's just like with Joseph and it's just like with Jacob. Two things. Let me show you. So with Joseph, Joseph need at a certain time for the land of 
Egypt because he became what the, the ambassador over it. And so now what God put in him, now a need has been identified with that place. So this is two things what God is doing. So he, he, the new place is only you, you was drawn to it because of the need that's going to help repair and build this company to a greater glory because you're there. That's one thing. At the same time, it's accommodating the reason why God birthing you this type of knowledge and what you're going to acquire while being there to help grow and expand what God originally put in you as a self entrepreneur for what God is using you. Now, I do see this because I do see other uh, things being developed and extended out of you. And I hear to see the Holy Ghost said because they want your knowledge. They need your knowledge because you have this type of anointing in this knowledge realm that will grow and assist. Okay, I hear like the word advisory. Oh, here, oh, oh. I, I hear you, Holy Ghost. Advisory, okay? And so like Jacob, you'll be watchful. I'm going to pray that God will keep you watchful because you're there. There's many people God send places and those places only flourish because whom God put there. So like Jacob with Laban, Laban identified that Jacob's God was blessing him. And the only reason why someone who don't serve God can be blessed is because of what's connected to him. And the reason why Jake, uh, Laban wanted Jacob there because he realized he was flourishing. So you're going to be careful even of deception of those who want the connection of your connection because they know your connection gives them a greater connection. Oh, uh, Holy Ghost. You got two. Okay, I hear you, Holy Ghost. He said, you're going to live out Joseph and Jacob's story. I remember he shared this with me. He said, I'm going to experience the Micaiah's prophecy, and uh, David and Saul, and then the man of God, who the prophet who listened to the man of God. I had to face three of those biblical scenarios in my life. And I'm using that because it came up while I was up against a spirit of Saul that was trying to kill me, but God designed me to help build King Saul. Then I was faced with, uh, I was uh, faced with the Micaiah's prophecy, where you up against all these prophets who are saying in agreement one thing, and you're the only one saying something that seems contrary, but yet it's God. And you get slapped and mistreated to what God spoke to you come to pass. I'm just sharing you with you what he told me. And then I came up against what I had to remember the prophet who God sent in the city. He said, do what you do. Don't eat. Leave out another way. But there was another man of God who said that God spoke to him, come in my house and so forth. And because he listened to that man of God and disobeyed God, God killed him. I came up against that and I had to remember that because God spoke something to me and another prophet comes and say, well, God said this, I had to remember, don't listen. What was my instructions? What was my assignment? And you got to remember your assignment. And why I'm saying this, because you're going to experience as like Joseph, when God will put you in a place of favor to help run a whole company that's going to help build them up, cause their revenue to flourish, and also at the same time, experience that like of Jacob, where people realize you are fruitful. What God have you do, it bless. And I just want to be connected to you, even though I don't want to be connected to the one that you serve in you. You see what I'm saying? I, I hope that I hope you understand me. I, I hope uh, uh, glory to God. Jesus is real. So that is for you. But God is doing a do out. God is doing. A, a, a twofold thing, but it's, it's birthing time. And so, Lord God, I thank you for sending the rain, Lord God, to meet and make contact with her seed that has already identified her need, Almighty God. Now, Lord God, I thank you that you're not going to withhold the prophetic rain, oh God. It's time, and it's the, it's the time, oh God. And it's the right timing, right opportunities, right happenings, because you have prayed. And because you have prayed, oh God, now it's time for you to send the fulfillment of the reign in Jesus Christ's matchless and marvelous name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know if anybody else have a, a, a prayer request um, or if someone else 
also believe. Now, Lord God, I speak to all the entrepreneurs. And Lord God, because there's an anointing, oh God, and, and Lord God, there is, I'm pulling on, oh God, also I'm pulling on the anointing, oh God, of the prophets, oh God, to that you, oh God, will allow your angels to begin to, oh God, to, to deliver the insight, the knowledge, oh God, and to the entrepreneurs that they will begin, oh God, their businesses will begin to develop. Send the rain that is associated with the seed and their need. Lord God, that there will be no stagnations. Lord God, remove every demonic blade that every time their wheat comes up, here come a blade trying to chop down their progress. Lord God, send rain, oh God, that will cause development and remove every weed that will try to choke out and cause stagnation. Lord God, I speak progression, development, momentum to the soil of which the seed has been planted in. And Lord God, when the rain has now been the vehicle that's communicating now to the seed, Lord God, it shall be abundant. Lord God, I call on the God of Mamre. Lord God, you are the God of Mamre and you have fed and supplied with virility, power, and strength. You have abundantly fed them, oh God, with riches, oh God. And I thank you for meeting each and every person in the place where they're at, oh God. In the name of Jesus, that when they lay down to sleep, they're going to wake up with a dream and a vision and the rain shall be awaiting them. And we thank you, almighty God. So it is written and so it is done. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I don't know if anyone has and I won't prolong. I won't keep no one. I don't know if anyone else had a prayer, a prayer request. I know that different ones are on different time zone. Nevertheless, um, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, and so for those who do desire um, to want to sow into the word is dollar sign divine PM. Um, dollar sign divine PM. That's D-I-V-I-N-E capital P capital M. I don't ever post it on there. Um, however, I do open it up and offer for those. And I, I pray that God will according to Deuteronomy 1.11, that he will bless you a thousandfold for all those who are faithful in even in giving, um, that I have not taken the time to acknowledge there's certain one that always give or is so, is, you know, seen on every Monday, they give an offer. So I just thank God for each and every one that God put in your heart to sow into the soul. And so I thank God for the word. I don't like to get off unless someone else has a prayer request or anything that, um, you feel that needs the direct attention. I don't mind uh, praying uh, for it, but I do believe God in his word. And I thank God for fulfilling in this year, prophecies being fulfilled. God made it happen. And I thank God that we see, we see clearly that we will not be deceived in this season, that our eyes will be open and that we will be dependent on the soul resources of heaven because our creator God and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the main source of our rainfall. And we want him to know with everything in us that we depend upon him solely. And Father God, is there anything in particular, evangelist? Evangelist, is there anything in particular that you want prayer for? Is it is it any direction of which you want pray for? Um, okay, glory to God. Okay, anybody else? I'm going to pray for evangelists, but anybody else? Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we bring, oh God, evangelist Tina Farrell, oh God, into the throne of grace, oh God, in this atmosphere, almighty God, in this atmosphere, almighty God, Lord God, begin to take her uh, let's see. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. What is this? I'm saying one, two, three, four, five. Lord God, I thank you. One, two, three, five. Lord God, I pray and I thank you for grace. I thank you, Father God, for the grace. I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five. I'm trying to make, trying to ask him what it is he's showing me as he began to have me pray. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God. 
what is this? Please forget, I'm trying to see what it is, what he showed me. Um, okay, let me ask you this. If there was five things that God asked you that you would want him to do, what would be the five things? What would be the five things that you need God to do? Be it God were to ask you, what are the five things you need him to do? What would they be? Can you identify them? Or can you name them for me? I, I can give you time to write it out. What would be the five things? Or you can call me if it's quicker. You can call me on the phone while I'm on here so you can tell me if it's quicker for you to tell me so I, we can move on. You can uh, call me real quick while I have you on here, but just make sure you turn down the volume, uh, but call me. Not on my iPad. <laughs> Hello. That's okay. I didn't mean on the iPad. Go ahead. What would be the five things? I was talking about my telephone. Guess what would be the five things? Okay. I was like, uh, I was like, uh, turn your phone down. Turn your back. Turn the background down because I can hear the echo. Okay. Yes. What would be the five things? First of all, uh, exaltation for myself. I would like uh, my my brothers to be delivered. I would like to see the uh, divine purpose ministry, uh, the you know uh, more expansion. You know more people coming in. Uh, uh, I already said growth. My children being delivered, and, and just more, just being more. You know more dedicated to God, uh, surrendering more to God, surrendering more to God. Okay, so the first thing you said was what. I want to make sure I understood. See my family delivered, taken set free, especially my brother Dale. He's been really heavy on my spirit. Okay, you had said something about exaltation. Yes, ma'am. You know, just going higher and more higher in the Lord. Okay, so and we'll start with that one because I want to make sure you understand what you just said <laughs> when you said exaltation of yourself. So, God said. If we exalt ourselves, he will abase us. And when we abase ourselves, he will exalt us. So the right, so let me just make sure. In order to be elevated, he must abase yeah. us. And so I just want to make sure the wording of what you're saying, we word it correctly. Because yes, because that's like saying I want to edify, I want self-exaltation. You don't want that because now he's about to humble you. He's about to bring you low. Right. <laughs> I, I just want to be more what God has called. I understand. Me. You it, the elevation, you want the elevation of God in order to do that, because he said anybody who is a base, he will exalt them in due season. And so, okay. So Lord God, okay, you can hang up and go back on. I, I, I understand the five okay. things now. Okay, I understand the five things. So because God had asked her, he showed me these five, uh, he showed me when I was being to pray for evangelists, these five things that she got, she's, I don't know if she's still on here on the, on the Facebook, but I begin to see for you evangelists, these five lined up uh, like these objects. And so he began to speak to me. If I were to ask her five things that she needs me. See, God want us to need. Because remember, the seed identifies the need, which brings forth the rain. But we want to make sure our need goes back to the dependency. I want to make sure that if any of us ask for something, we ask the right way. Because like, I just wanted her to listen to it. Because when we ask, Lord, I want exaltation. The focus of being exalted will make God bring us low. When we when we abase ourselves, he said, any if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt us. And so, Lord God, based upon, oh God, the things that she need, oh God, I thank you, Lord God, that her prayer request has now lined up with the need of the rain. Now, Lord God, begin to send rain upon every request that need in her life. You know, oh God, how to now make it happen. 
You know, almighty God, how to make it happen what she's been asking you. Lord God, make this happen. Lord God, make this happen. Now, Lord God, I declare you have now made it happen. Lord God, I decree and declare it shall not be deaths in any one of her family members' lives, oh God. Do not take them from the earth until they have had a relationship with you established. Seal them by your spirit and by your blood, almighty God. Allow them to have an encounter with you, almighty God, in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Lord God, for every need that has been a need of you, oh God, in her life. Now, Lord God, I thank you that you've already prepared the seed. Now, Holy Ghost of God, now begin to reign. Now, Lord God, I thank you, oh God, that you, that she will humble herself under your mighty hand, Lord God. I thank you, oh God, that she knows how to be all things. Like Paul said, I know how to be a base and I know how to be, oh God, all common things to those are not to relate to those, oh God. Give her, oh God, a spirit that can relate to those that you would send her to minister to, oh God. Lord God, allow her to, oh God, to be dressed and clothed in meekness, oh God. Teach her, almighty God, your ways, Lord Jesus, because you are humble and you are meek, oh God. So allow those fruits, oh God, to begin to develop in her, oh God. In the due season, oh God, you shall elevate her, oh God, and you shall raise her up, oh God. Allow her to come into more knowledge and revelation of you, almighty God. Lord God, I thank you for her desire for you, O oh Lord. Um, please forgive me. Um, he's uh, glory to God. In Jesus' name, Lord God, in Jesus' name. The reason why I pause off like that, some things that the Lord uh, begins to um, and God is going to do it. And God is going to do it. He's going to, he already has answered every five, every one of those five areas of need. We must, he just wanted us to identify there's a need. And um, God is good. And because it's been identified, God is going to do it. He's going to do it. Glory to God. He's going to do it. In the name of Jesus. Um, God is good. Um, um, thank you, Jesus. God is good. He's going to do it. He's going to do it, woman of God. He's going to do it. Amen. God is good. I, I thank all, each and every one of you for coming on. I um, I pray that God keep us crowned with humility and shroud with meekness, a vesture of meekness. Meekness is power under control. And Lord God, we thank you that we submit. And Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for doing it. I thank you for doing it in each and every person's life. And we love you and we say thank you, Lord God, for doing it, for answering, oh God, and sending the rain and divine retribution to the enemy that has been fighting your people's progress. I thank you, oh God, in Jesus' name. I thank you all for joining us. Uh, this is the Prophetic Flow of Revelation Monday Night Service. I am Pastor Prophet Dr. Lalisa McGee with Divine Purpose Ministry. This is where purpose don't fight purpose. I love you. And most importantly, remember, our Father and Savior Jesus Christ loves you more than anything forever and eternally. God bless you all for those who are going to sleep. Have a sweet sleep. According to Proverbs 3.24, I look forward to hearing um, the testimonies of God um, on what God is has done and is doing, uh, continue to grow in God. And God bless you all. Have a good night.